The Pokemon Red Any% Percent Glitchless category is one of the most popular Pokemon categories to speedrun, as over 500 people have solidified themselves on the leaderboard. And while many of the speedrunners have reached the Hall of Fame in less than 3 and even 2 hours, I wanted to take a look at the bottom of the list. And in 550th place, Infinite Mystery sits with a time of 6 hours, 7 minutes, and 8 seconds, which is over an hour behind the next closest person. But this made me wonder, how difficult could it be to achieve a slower time than that and claim the lowest spot on the leaderboard? Well, that's the exact question that I'll be answering in today's video. Now, you're probably asking yourself, what is the point of this? And to that, I say you have a pretty good question. But you know what, in this case, being at the very bottom of a leaderboard is just as cool as being at the very top. Anyways, if you guys enjoy my content and want to see more, then be sure to hit that sub button as it really helps out the channel. And without further ado, let's see if I can complete the slowest of Pokemon speedrun. Now from my very limited knowledge of Pokemon Red and Blue speedrunning, I do know a few strategies, like naming the player character, rival, and your team members a single letter in order to make text boxes move a little faster. I also remember that back in the day, Squirtle used to be the go-to Pokemon for this run, so I went ahead and chose it before barely knocking out my rival's Bulbasaur. After delivering Oak's parcel, I made sure to catch a Nidoran male, since Nidoking is the modern strategy for this game. By the way, this took way longer than I thought, as I think I ran into 5 Rattatas before finally coming across a Nidoran male, but I suppose that's a good thing for what I'm trying to do. After a bit of leveling, I took on the rival once again, before heading inside the Viridian Forest and accidentally running into an optional trainer. Oh man, that is such a shame. Yeah, I'll be doing that a lot in this playthrough. Anyways, by about the 37 minute mark, I defeated Brock, which believe it or not, would have put me at 4 hours and 56 minutes by the time I get all 8 gym badges, which is way too fast. So, I made sure to battle every trainer on Route 3 and check out every area in Mount Moon, which got me to Cerulean City in just under an hour and 15 minutes. The rival battle was relatively easy thanks to my beastly Nidoking, but I decided to not battle every trainer on the way to Bill's house, which worked out nicely as I didn't get the second badge until over the hour and a half mark, which puts me on a nice pace. Unfortunately, I completely forgot to record the trip to Vermilion City and the rival battle on the SS Anne, but he wasn't even a challenge, and my pace was still okay as I knocked out Lieutenant Surge just under two hours in. From there, I stocked up on some items for the long road to Lavender Town. The rock tunnel was a lot longer than I remember it being, as I fought a ton of trainers in there. Because of that, I skipped over the Pokemon Tower for now and dashed just straight to Celadon City. Because I was almost at the two and a half hour mark, I decided to buy the Poke Doll, as I don't think I'll need to go through the Rocket Hideout in the game corner. Erica was sort of my first wall in this run though, as I lost to her a couple of times. The only reason I eventually won was because War Turtle got a lucky freeze with Ice Beam on her Vile Plume. But this made me realize that maybe using two Pokemon wasn't the best idea, because the levels are starting to catch up. However, I could still get by the rival in the Pokemon Tower before saving Mr. Fuji and heading down the cycling road where I skipped over most of the trainers. Getting the HMs for Surf and Strength didn't take long at all, and just like that, I was at the 5th gym in under 3 hours. But it was starting to get dark outside and I still needed to go for a run and pick up some dinner, so yeah, roughly an hour and a half later I was back at it. I'm not sure if there's a rule in speedrunning where you have to continuously be playing the game, because taking that break basically guaranteed that I'll reach my goal. Anyways, Koga went down without too many issues before I surfed on over to Cinnabar Island, where I picked up the secret key and defeated Blaine with my very underleveled War Turtle. Yeah, Blaine's AI is just that bad. Now at this point, my Pokemon were really underleveled, and I knew I was going to achieve the slowest speedrun, even if I activated walkthrough walls and went right to the Pokemon League, so I decided to use the speedup button and grind in the Silph Co. 
Call it lame if you want, but it was getting late and I had to wake up at 7 a.m. the next morning as I'm a pretty busy college student, so try to cut me a little slack. Obviously, by using the speed up button, I won't actually be able to submit this run to the speedrun leaderboard, but I already knew that going into this video, since with Pokemon Red speedrunning, I'm pretty sure you have to download some type of patch or something like that, which I didn't do, so we can just pretend that my name is on the leaderboard at the end of this thing. By the time I got to the rival, my team was all beefed up, so I didn't struggle against him or Giovanni. I then wiped out Sabrina's team just before the 6 hour mark, so it was on to the Viridian Gym. Yet again, I was an idiot and didn't record the Giovanni battle, but we only had to face one trainer before him, so within 5 minutes we were out of there. Once I reached my rival's Alakazam on Route 22, we officially passed the 6 hours, 7 minutes, and 8 seconds mark, but I did have some problems against the Alakazam, as I had to sack off a few of my HM Pokemon just to win. After zipping through Victory Road and actually grinding against wild Pokemon instead of cheating in rare candies for once, albeit I did use the speed up button, but you guys should still be a little proud of me, it was time for the Elite Four. Lorelei was probably the toughest member, as both Blastoise and Nidoking got down to red health before we barely knocked out Lapras. I hardly took any damage from Bruno's team, so that was an easy dub, and the same goes for Agatha. That means the Lance was up, but because Gen 1 AI sucks, and his Dragonairs and Dragonite think agility is super effective on Nidoking, we easily got the victory. And just over six and a half hours in, I used one last Earthquake to take down my rival's Venusaur, making us the new champion of the Kanto region. Well, that was a pretty interesting way to play through a classic Pokemon game. It really made me admire the skill of the top speedrunners in Pokemon Red, as it dawned on me that by the time I was in the Vermilion Gym, some people were already done with the game. I know I was purposefully moving at a slow pace, but that's still crazy. With an official time of 6 hours, 36 minutes, and 1 second, I have technically achieved the slowest of Pokemon Red speedrun according to the leaderboards, even though my name will most likely never be up there for real. But let me know in the comments if I should still try to somehow submit this run anyways. For now though, I hope you guys enjoyed, have a great rest of your day, and until next time, deuces!